Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we're picking back up with old French fairy tales and the story of Our Son from Countess Sophie de Segur. This story, as we've left off, we've met all of the players so far at this point. We've gotten so much information and backstory directly from the tale. This isn't a matter of characters performing exposition for us. Instead, we're getting to watch it, which is really, really wonderful, and honestly quite rare with Contest de Sigur's tales of mischievous fairies. We pick up our tale with part four, The Dream, that features, well, a dream from Princess Violet, but also our son learning the truth about his history and the events before his birth. Again, in a way that is so out of the ordinary for these tales. This is Our Son, The Dream. In the morning, Our Son was the first awake, aroused by the lowing of the cow. He rubbed his eyes and looked about him and asked himself why he was in a stable. Then he recalled the events of the day before, sprang up from his bundle of hay, and ran quickly to the fountain to wash his face. While he was washing, past Rose, who had, like our son, risen at a very early hour and had come out to milk the cow, left the house door open. Our son entered quietly and proceeded to the chamber of his mother, who was still sleeping. He drew back the curtains from Violet's bed and found her sleeping as peacefully as Agnella. Our son watched her for a long time and was happy to see that she smiled in her dreams. Suddenly, Violet's brow contracted and she uttered a cry of alarm, half raised herself in the bed and throwing her little arms around our son's neck she exclaimed, Our son, good our son, save poor Violet, poor Violet is in the water and a wicked toad is pulling Violet. She now awoke weeping bitterly with all the symptoms of great alarm. She clasped our son tightly in her little arms. He tried in vain to reassure and control her, but still she exclaimed, Wicked toad, good our son, save Violet. Agnella, who had awaked at her first cry, could not yet understand Violet's alarm, but she succeeded at last in calming her, and the child told her her dream. Violet was walking with our son, but he did not give his hand to Violet, nor look at her. A wicked toad came and pulled Violet into the water. She fell and called our son. He came and he saved Violet. She loves good our son, she added in a tender voice. We'll never forget him. Saying these words, Violet threw herself into his arms. He, no longer fearing the effect of his bare skin, embraced her a thousand times and comforted and encouraged her. Agnella had no doubt that this dream was a warning sent by the fairy Drolette. She resolved to watch carefully over Violet and to make known to our son all that she could reveal to him without disobeying the fairy. When she had washed and dressed Violet, she called our son to breakfast. Pass Rose brought them a bowl of milk fresh from the cow, some good brown bread, and a pot of butter. Violet, who was hungry, shouted for joy when she saw this good breakfast. Violet loves good milk, good bread, good butter, loves everything here, with good our son and good mamma our son. I am not called Mama our son, said Agnella, laughing. Call me only Mama. Oh, no, no, not Mama, cried Violet, shaking her head sadly. Mama is lost. She was always sleeping, never walking, never taking care of poor Violet, never kissing little Violet. Mama our son speaks, walks, kisses Violet, and dresses her. I love Mama our son, oh, so, so much, she said, seizing Agnella's hand and pressing it to her heart. Agnella replied by clasping her tenderly in her arms. Our son was much moved. His eyes were moist. Violet perceived this, and passing her hand over his eyes, she said entreatingly, I pray you don't cry, our son. If you cry, Violet must cry too. No, no, dear little girl, I will cry no more. Let us eat our breakfast, and then we will take a walk. They breakfasted with good appetites. Violet clapped her hands frequently and exclaimed, Oh, how good it is! I love it! I love it! I am very glad! After breakfast, our son and Violet went out to walk while Agnella and Pass Rose attended to the house. Our son played with Violet and gathered her flowers and strawberries. She said to him, We will always walk with each other. 
You must always play with Violet. I cannot always play, little girl. I have to help Mama and pass Rose to work. What sort of work, our son? To sweep, scour, take care of the cow, cut the grass and bring wood and water. Violet will work with our son. You are too little, dear Violet, but you can still try. When they returned to the house, our son started on his various tasks. Violet followed him everywhere. She did her best and believed that she was helping him, but she was really too small to be useful. After some days had passed away, she began to wash the cups and saucers, spread the cloth, fold the linen, and wipe the table. She went to the milking with Pass Rose, helped to strain the milk and skim it and wash the marble flagstones. She was never out of temper, never disobedient, and never answered impatiently or angrily. Our son loved her more and more from day to day. Aniela and Pass Rose were also very fond of her, and the more so because they knew that she was our son's cousin. Violet loved them, but our son most of all. How could she help loving this good boy who always forgot himself for her, who was constantly seeking to amuse and please her, and who would indeed have been willing to die for his little friend? One day, when Pass Rose had taken Violet with her to the market, Aniela related to our son the sad circumstances which had preceded his birth. She revealed to him the possibility of getting rid of his hairy skin, and receiving a smooth white skin in exchange if he could ever find anyone who would voluntarily make this sacrifice from affection and gratitude. Never, cried Arson, never will I propose or accept such a sacrifice. I will never consent to devote a being who loves me to that life of wretchedness which the vengeance of the fairy Furious has condemned me to endure. Never, never, from a wish of mine, shall a heart capable of such a sacrifice suffer all that I have suffered, and all that I still suffer from the very fear of antipathy of men. Aniela argued in vain against this firm and noble resolve of our son. He declared that she must never speak again to him of this exchange, to which he would most assuredly never give his consent, and that it must never be named to Violet or any other person who loved him. Aniela promised compliance, after a few weak arguments. In reality, she approved and admired his sentiments. She could not but hope, however, that the fairy Drolette would recompense this generous and noble character of her little charge and, by some extraordinary exercise of her power, release him from his hairy skin. That is The Dream, the fourth part of the fairy tale Our Son. We see a dream by Violet, the young child, and... It seems like it is a prophecy, doesn't it? And we shall see how true it becomes. This is Dan Schulz for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.